and now we turn to Let's Play Not Final Fantasy 2. Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun. And of course, he's looking down the bio fence. Gee, thanks. I'm not sure what's worse, and some of the bio fence are making me look pointless. Basically, the main reason you want to do this now is because you have two people who can cast wall. There's also items, at least in the um, PS1 version, other versions that can cast wall as a wall in your character, which makes it even easier to set up. I'm concentrating the walls on the mages since they have the ability to revive people if I don't get enough walls up in time. And of course, after the mages, I prioritize Seeds and Cecil over Edge because Cecil is more useful. Yeah, this is one of those battles that's only hard if you don't know what you're doing. It's also a good example of why it's important to actually read information and talk to people in game because if you actually talk to people, you'd know exactly what to do. Now I wonder. Okay, that's another problem you can run into. Okay, you can't reserve the dragon. Kind of funny if you could. No point in bothering to heal her because, honestly speaking, his damage would, would end up killing you anyway. I have no idea if the wall has been reestablished or has gone away. One of the issues with a game like this, you can never really tell. Okay, I see. I didn't notice that before it does say wall on the character. Okay, you can tell there's a wall established, but it doesn't have the guards you'd have in like Final Fantasy VII of it going down or anything like that. We now have the best summon in the game. And of course, these two change their tune. I bet. Now, if only they could join the party. And let's just get out of here. Exit exists for a reason. Okay, now we'll return home. Might as well get for an event sequence before doing the next area. But we should also sleep. And of course, Fuso Ya with plot trigger power has caused stuff to happen. I also like how they just zoomed to this area. Well, the games would be like that to save time. They just take you directly to the next area of the plot. Scream. What did you think? Ah, oh, something? The Tower of Babel. Of course you're late. But it was for a good cause. We need dragons on our side.
That's the big threat. Okay. I can blow up stuff I know and cause explosions, but let's be honest. In today's world, unless the giant you're facing has everything bounced off as impervious metal, realistically, it wouldn't be much of a threat because eventually it would go down because there's only so many things it can stop. A single being, like I said, unless they have invincibility armor and stuff, can only do so much. Ants can take down a lion. If pros, if you had enough ants to bite it to death. Call Cloud. Make him do all the work. And of course, the giant doesn't realize people have guns. How they got up here, I don't know. Oh, wait. Said probably in being a new airship. And of course, this scene you would have seen anyway, even if you had never met Yane in the cave. Selves and stuff. I brought generics with me. By the way, my mechanics are black mages. No, we're white mages. Well, whatever. Now, my theory on why this worked, how the Elder was able to unstone them, I don't really care for the whole. It's because of the personal connection, stuff, and magical power. No! My real fear is the Elder knew that Paulum was trying to get out of his homework, and the Elder wasn't going to let Paulum get away with it. So, of course, he unstoned him, lectured Paulum for being a lazy bum, and Paulum apologized. That's the real reason. It was all to make Paulum do homework. Dad, this is Final Fantasy IV. No one stays dead. Well, almost no one. Besides, one thing you have to learn about stories is no one ever dies from being turned to stone. At all. Being turned to stone is a temporary death at best. Although, honestly speaking, if you could actually turn someone to stone in real life, they probably would die just from the fact that the organs stop working. Unless the stone's like a shell on the body that basically recovers it, but the body still functions. Even then, you have to be fed something. So I guess the body might absorb the stone to keep itself alive? I don't know, but either way, it just seems kind of odd. Of course, they saw us all the way back there. So yeah, this is a fun dungeon. And of course, as per usual, one in a way is a crime. Especially if it's a back attack, which I think reduces the ability one away by 500%. So, let's just get this over with. Let's try to get for as much of this dungeon as possible.
another problem I can run into with myself is forgetting to actually heal after battles. So I better be careful about that. But still, we'll get in there. enemies like me way too much. And they still like me. Okay. Come on. Thankfully, Quake is doing his job. Like I said, I'm being lazy when it comes to treasure chest. Okay, this one I won't be lazy about. Yeah, Boarding Treasure, the LP, continues. Well, next time on Let's Play Not Final Fantasy 2, we will continue for the rest of this dungeon. So, bye for now.